In our last video, we indicated that our puppies were ready to have their ears cropped. In fact, they were scheduled to have the procedure performed the very next day. And of course, we received a lot of feedback from those for it and those opposed to it. So since ear cropping is such a controversial topic, in this video, we'll provide the top reasons why it's done and we'll also weigh in on the debate. And at the end, we'll give you an update on how the pups are doing post-op. And so the proverbial question is, why do people crop a dog's ears? Let's first start by defining essentially what an ear crop means. Ear cropping, sometimes called ear trimming, is an elective surgical procedure that involves the cutting and shaping of the floppy part of the dog's ear to make it stand erect. It's done to achieve a specific look that coincides with a desired image, including that of a breed standard. It's typically done on a pup between the ages of 7 to 12 weeks and should be performed under general anesthesia. This is considered the most desirable time to perform the procedure because the ear's cartilage has not yet hardened and it's easy to train to stand and become erect. But to truly understand why people crop dogs' ears, we have to look back in history. The practice of ear cropping dates back several centuries actually, even back to ancient Rome, when dogs were used for work and were performing various tasks that may have predisposed them to ear injuries. Dogs were used for utilitarian purposes. Only extremely wealthy, elite, and even royalty had dogs as luxury items or pets. Most other common folk used dogs to aid them in their own survival. For instance, livestock guardian dogs traditionally had their ears cropped to protect their ears from wolves and other aggressors whereas dogs used in pit fighting sports had their ears cropped to reduce the number of places an opponent could grab onto. In dog breeds bred as guardians, such as the Cane Corso, ear cropping was often carried out due to the belief that an erect ear was better capable of detecting sounds compared to a floppy ear. There was also this belief in the past that cropped ears were less prone to medical complications such as ear infections and hematomas. So essentially, these practices were employed to inhibit anything that would impair a dog's function because the dog's function was its primary asset. And the amalgamation of these factors shaped the dog's external appearance and thus led to breed standards. So let's talk about breed standard and what it really means. Breed standards cover the externally observable qualities of the dog, such as its appearance, its movement, and its temperament. And the exact format of the breed standard will vary, as breed standards are not scientific by any means, and they change as the needs of the member of that group, which authors them change. <laughs> but in general, a breed standard may include its history, um, a narrative description of the breed, and details of the ideal external observable structures and behaviors for that breed. And so a dog that closely matches the breed standards is said to have good conformation, right? We call that conforming to breed standard. And remember, breed standard is based upon the historical function of that dog's breed and may or may not be applicable in modern times. So why did people crop dogs' ears again? <laughs> because it was perceived to enable the breed of dog to serve its functional purpose, and thus it became breed standard. Well, let's fast forward to modern times. Does ear cropping apply to the function of the dog's breed today? Well, people argue that floppy ears are prone to ear infections, while others wish to adhere to a breed standard meaning having the look of the dog as it did in ancient days. But what we hear most is that dogs with erect ears look more alert and quite frankly more intimidating and on the lines of possibly being aggressive and fierce. The reality is there just have not been exhaustive studies to prove or even disprove 
whether there are substantiated medical complications involving floppy ears, such as ear infections or even impaired hearing. And if the dog is a pet and not actually used for true working purposes, is the ear crop even necessary? While those who fancy the breed and want to stay pure to its original standard say yes. There's a huge debate over ethics and whether or not it should be legal. And actually, there are several countries that ban the practice. However, it is still legal in the U.S. with certain states imposing restrictions on who can perform the procedure and how it should be done to minimize pain and stress to the animal. When I decided to get my first two Connie Corsos, I was a recently divorced single mom of a three-year-old daughter. And I wanted not only companionship, I wanted to have a dog that looked fierce. Even if it wasn't vicious or aggressive, I wanted it to be intimidating enough that I would not look like a mark and that someone would think twice about approaching me if I were walking with my young daughter um, down the street, in the park, or anywhere. And when I got the Cane Corsos, their ears were already cropped and I found that they were just a wonderful breed with a just phenomenal personality but people thought twice about approaching them even though I knew that these dogs were absolutely wonderful and didn't have an aggressive bone in their body they were guardians and if put in the right situation they would absolutely protect me and my daughter but they were not looking for a fight and they were not out to get someone but but for the fact that they looked aggressive with those perked ears I felt comfortable and so it meant the world to me and I chose that option because that of my own situation. The Whether or not you should crop your dog's ears ultimately remains a personal decision, albeit requiring deep thinking about the pros and cons if the country in which you reside allows it. So how are our puppies doing post-op? Let's take a look. The pup's ears will take between 8 to 10 days to fully heal. It's not much more to do other than to occasionally apply some neosporin to them. Thereafter, if they are not already standing, the ears may be posted. Take a look at some of our other pups from our previous litters and how their ear crops turned out. Thank you again for tuning in and following us on our journey. If you appreciated the video, leave us a like. Feel free to share your respectful thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.